So we are going to learn how to solve this differential equation right here. y double prime plus 2y prime minus 3y equals 0. And this type of differential equation is called homogeneous because all of the derivatives add up to 0. If we had, for example, an equals x on the right side of the equation, this would no longer be homogeneous. So the fact that we have a 0 over here is why we call it a homogeneous differential equation. And in this video, we'll only be talking about those that have constant coefficients like 1, 2, and negative 3. Now, if we're looking at this type of equation and we want to solve it, we want to think about what kind of solutions we would expect to have for this kind of equation. And in order to do that, I notice that because all of these derivatives are being multiplied by constants and they add up to 0, it seems like each of these derivatives has to be a constant multiple of the original function y. If it weren't a constant multiple, they wouldn't add to 0. For example, if y prime were sine of x times y, there would be no way you could add them up and get to 0. So they have to be some kind of constant multiple. Do we know some kind of function where its derivative is a constant multiple of the original function? Well, I think we do, and that function is c e to the rt. If we have e to the rt for any number r, and then we differentiate it, we get y prime equals r e to the rt like this. So r is that constant multiple. If we differentiate again, we're just going to get c times r squared e to the rt. We just keep differentiating all the way down. What if we try to plug in these values right here, these functions, into this differential equation and see if we can solve for the value of r. Maybe that would give us our solution. Well, first of all, for y double prime, we know that's going to be c r squared e to the rt. Then plus 2 times y prime is c r e to the rt minus 3 y is c e to the rt. This equals 0. And we see there's a lot of stuff that we can cancel out because every single term here has a c e to the rt, c e to the rt, c e to the rt. So we can divide that out of all of the terms which leaves us with an r squared plus 2r minus 3 equals 0. And if we want to solve this equation, well, we can just factor it because it's a nice polynomial. So we'll get r plus 3 times r minus 1 equals 0. And that gives us our solutions of r equals negative 3 and r equals 1. So what are these telling us? Well, if we go back to our original function here, we know that y equals c e to the rt has to satisfy this differential equation here, which means that if we do y equals c e to the negative 3t, we'll call that c1 e to the negative 3t, and then if we also have c2 e to the t, e to the 1t, then these two will both be solutions to the differential equation. So we started out with one function here, y equals c e to the rt. But now, for some reason, we've ended up with 2 down here. So the question is, which one of these are we going to choose to have as our final solution? Is it too much to ask for both? Here's the thing. The differential operator, the act of taking the derivative, is linear, which means if we took the derivative with respect to t of c1 e to the negative 3t plus c2 e to the t, this, the result that we're going to get is the same as if we took the derivative of c1 e to the negative 3t and then added it with the derivative of c2 e to the t, which means that if one of these satisfies this differential equation that we add up all these derivatives and get 0, and the other one also has that property that we add them up and get 0, if we add them together and plug them into this equation, all we're going to get is 0 plus 0. Well, that still equals 0, right? So in fact, our general solution is not just going to be one of these two functions, but in fact, it's going to be both of them at the same time. So our final solution to this differential equation will be of the form y equals c1 e to the negative 3t plus c2 e to the t. And you might be asking, how can we solve for these constants? Well, the answer to that will depend on the problem that you're trying to solve, because for example, say that this y function is talking about the vertical motion of a particle. And the problem says, well, at time t equals 0, the particle is 10 feet up in the air. So then we would have y of 0 equals 10. And you could plug this into our function here, plug in 10 here, and then e to the 0, e to the 0 on both of these, and solve for what c1 and c2 would have to be in those cases. 
So these are called initial conditions, and those are ways that we can solve for particular solutions of the differential equation that solve for specific initial values. But in general, any function that has this form right here is going to be a solution to our differential equation. Now notice when we started out, we had the differential equation y double prime plus 2y prime minus 3y equals 0. And what we got from that is this right here r squared plus 2r minus 3 equals 0. Now notice some similarity between these two equations, right? We have a y double prime, and that turns into an r squared. y prime turns into r, and 3y just turns into a 3. So in general, if we have an equation where there's the kth derivative of y on this side, that's going to translate to r to the power of k, because when we differentiate e to the rt k times, we're going to end up with an r to the k out in front, and the c and the e to the rt are eventually all going to get canceled out of this equation right here. So if you want to solve a homogeneous differential equation that looks something like this, what you want to do is turn it into this polynomial right here, which is called the characteristic polynomial of this equation. Then you can solve for the values of r and plug them into y equals c e to the rt, Add the two roots that you get in a second order case, and you'll get your general solution just like this.